This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is a simple tool that provides you a safe and enjoyable online experience. It can unlock your favorite apps and websites no matter where you are, like in an office or school setting, or even visiting areas where certain services are blocked. That's because ExpressVPN has over 3,000 servers in 160 locations spanning across 94 countries. Accessing region-locked content from services like Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, and HBO Max, amongst many others, is simple and fast. ExpressVPN also shields all your internet traffic with strong encryption and has a strict no activity or connection logs policy. You're protected on any network, including public Wi-Fi's in cafes, airports, and hotels. ExpressVPN is available on Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Linux, and even routers, so your gaming consoles or smart TVs can also benefit from it. Use the link expressvpn.com forward slash JaganX to find out more and to receive a limited time offer of receiving an extra three months when you sign up for the 12 month plan. Hey guys, welcome to another session of Epic 7. This is my initial thoughts video for Jack O. Uh, Jack O is the newest member to join the GG collab with Epic 7. And uh, I think like design wise, she looks fantastic. I think, you know, Outside of like Guilty Gear already having really cool character designs, uh, Epic Seven always has this kind of polish to make their their waifus from all these different IPs like slightly prettier. Okay, so from a like anime beauty perspective, slightly prettier, like more polished. Um, not to take anything from Arc System Works uh, original designs and all that. I mean, if you if you play their games, you watch their animations, you know that they're all really good. But I think that there is definitely a you can see that Epic Seven keeps that same quality, and it's also really high quality. If you don't, you know, look at uh, the original uh, Guilty Gear character versus Epic Seven's kind of uh, rendition of it, then you'd probably be like, "Oh yeah, that's Jacko, no problem." But if you look at the finite details, you can actually really see that, like, you know, she looks really good, right? So uh, Epic Seven's artists or their their third party vendors or whatnot. I don't know, you know, who's responsible for what anymore, but uh, it's always pretty good. So I'm very excited about this. This is the artifact art. Um, you can definitely see slight differences, uh, but the artifact looks pretty good. Uh, the, the art of the artifact, that is. <laughs> uh, uh, you might be looking at other stuff. Uh, I think that she's holding a mask there, uh, but overall, um, yeah, pretty, pretty cool. The character overall, I feel like in line with all the Guilty Gear characters right now, I feel like Elfelt is like, I think if you think about PVP, I think Elfelt has more use than Jacko, but I'm just going to say that right now that, you know, I might be wrong, of course. Um, Dizzy is hard to use at the moment and then Biken almost never used, but uh, like, I feel like Jacko and Elfelt share more similarities then they do differences, although like your mentality to use them might be slightly different. Um, but I, I feel that if I were to put them on a tier list in terms of like usability right away, um, obviously Jacko is designed to be kind of like maybe useful in the current meta or like to go alongside it. But I feel like Elle felt um, after her buff was, you know, really on paper was actually pretty strong. And to be honest, she could still be used as a pocket pick um, best with a book, best if you have really good speed gear. But uh, Jacko, on the other hand, uh, will give me that same vibe as like, I think you could use her. I'm not sure if you have to have her, but because she is a collab hero, obviously, I think everybody's gonna go ham. I'm excited about it. I do, you know, feel that I wanted a new hero, and just because of her character design looking really good, and she's like a potentially very strong nuker, um, you know, I'm excited to pull for the banner regardless. So, First things first, again, we look at the uh, element, the star sign, and the, the class, of course, she's a Taurus warrior. Um, at this point, as I'm making the recording, everyone knows this. Uh, hopefully, if you guys have any, like, thoughts on the team comps you think about with her, using with her, you know, let me know in the comments down below. Um, it's really that passive that drives, I think, the rest of the team forward. Otherwise, she's just, like, a good single target damage dealer. Um, so Taurus Warriors, you should be very familiar, especially if you have Cigarette for Wyvern or Euphine or something like that. Um, they have very high attack, as you can see there. Uh, 12, 1,228. Speed is actually pretty good for Warrior, 109. Uh, health and defense are just kind of like average, but they're really damage dealers. 
and uh, crit rate and crit damage is also really good. So we got 23 crit chance and 165 crit damage. I do believe that the crit damage comes in two awakenings, I believe. So two, two awakenings to crit, two awakenings to crit damage. So it's very, very um, an aggressive sort of star sign. We have an imprint concentration of 18% attack, which will also really, really help that uh, scaling that damage. Um, as a 12, 1228 is not low attack, of course. It's, it's considered quite high attack. Uh, if you have, uh, again, those uh, those Taurus Warriors built, you know how easy it is to get their damage rocketing. Um, and she has defense pen, so it's pretty good. So skill two, trick or treat. So this is the thing I think that she probably has that would make you want to try her with different comps. Uh, just because of this trick or treat at the start of battle grants the chain of Chiron um, or Chiron. Chiron to the ally in the back row for two turns. Uh, after an ally attacks, when the target is stunned, increase the combat readiness of all allies by 15%. The combat readiness can be boosted, as you can see there on the uh, on the bottom of the skill enhance. It's really a 20% CR boost, and most likely will do this if you using if you're using Jacko in any such situation. Um, just do keep in mind that it is requiring a stun to th for this to be activated. So in terms of like like a summertime of Syria. Uh, would just require an AoE. There is definitely more RNG involved in this CR boost, uh, and also that the if your focus on the stun is based on the chain of Chiron, then what you would need to do is basically be able to land a stun before the two turns, right? So that is for me. That's kind of like a red flag uh, in terms of like real, real usefulness, especially if you have if they have an immunity buffer and you don't really have a way to strip. So there is something to note, um, it continues after the, the CR boost percent. This effect is activated after all the caster's effects have occurred and can only be activated once every three turns. So this is most likely in context to talk about the stun and I think in the video, they showed it, it realistically what they're trying to imply is that because Chain of Chiron is a buff, so it works like Solitarius's uh, Solitaria's buff, uh, passive buff, uh, where she can basically do Isla Violin and still land the debuff. So the artifact uh, effects actually proc, and the passive debuff that comes from Chain of Chiron will actually come after that. So I believe that's what the video was trying to imply. Is it's like, okay, don't forget you got the you got the Isla Violin, or you know you you might be able to proc a you know Fairy Tail Tenebria's um artifact and get that strip uh so so that's just 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 good to know um also if the uh well i guess i guess it wouldn't matter here but if the character has like a strip and not strip before debuff but like strip into a debuff like maybe like a bizarre or something like that then uh, the bizarre is a really bad example but you if you know what i mean um, then the Chain of Chiron's uh, stun still happens after. So if you don't land the debuff of the character that strips, but you're still stripped, uh, you still have stripped the immunity, your stun could still go off. Alright, so Chain of Chiron, if you read it on the bottom there, after attack has a 25% chance to stun the target for one turn. So that's 1% higher than Abyssal Crown. So it's, it's, it's pretty good. Like 25%, you're more than likely to probably get one stun. So as long as you can somehow secure that slot that, okay, someone's got to remove the immunity. Um, the argument would be like, people would be like, well, no one runs immunity anymore. I don't believe that's true. I myself, uh, it's just my, it might just be me. Um, I myself, because I don't play cleave a lot, like especially in World Arena, I, I tend to still put immunity on um, just for that extra check. So like even my Violet is on immunity now, um, my A Ravi isn't yet. I'm considering it though because I I'm not quite sure if a pen set at the moment for A Ravi is necessary. But it's just how these things are. I think some some characters are still really good with pen set. And uh, and today I was uh, I was doing an arena run and I saw like you know Celine, um, not have the immunity, and. And basically my summertime is basically like landed a bomb on Celine and Celine got stunned from the bomb um, after I got a turn. Anyways, regardless. So there's a lot of stuff that it's like immunity could still be good. 
And the argument would be like, okay, do I want that like that 15 to 17% damage from the defense pen, from the pen set? Or do I want the immunity to make sure I get the turn? So I, I I'm 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 actually going back into my characters and I'm actually looking at all the ones I had pen set on. I'm just like, did did did, did it did it help me in a fight? And the question was never like never yes. Most of the time, it was like immunity probably could have done better. So anyways, I'm just saying that as like a commentary. I don't know if you are watching this, you have the same feeling. It's like, hey, immunity would have saved me here. And then the pen set doesn't necessarily always get that kill, right? So it's like, um, what I'm trying to get to is that I feel that uh, this chain of Chiron, although on paper, it just, it basically opens up a huge opportunity to have that backliner slot with any type of character. There are a ton of strips out there now, like even Edda is, like Edda's a DPS and a pusher herself and she can stun and she can hold book and she can strip, she can push back. There's like there's like a lot of characters, Ran, Piera, you know, Politis, all that stuff. There's a ton of characters that do strip now. And so there's a lot of characters that would really fit this chain of Chiron and I just, I feel like Okay, so this is a really good thing, right? This is a really good thing about Jacko is that she brings a very useful mechanic, CR boost for full party and stun, so disabling turn, for full party, so she really opens up the opportunity uh, to be great, okay? So um, I had, I know I felt, sound like I was like negative. I'm not exactly negative on that. It's a high proc rate, but you're still going through RNG. It's better for the meta if the meta stays that people are going, not going immunity. Um, like she'll find more use if people start you know popping up immunity anymore then it slightly becomes a bit trickier because then people can start banning banning characters that they know that you know would strip or whatever i don't know i don't know i don't know how to explain it exactly but hopefully if you're following my train of thought you might know what i'm talking about but we'll see we'll see uh, outside of that um i mean okay, this is the uh this is the chain of chiron uh, basically what's happened is that C. Lilius got a turn um, and she proc Politis. Politis has the Chain of Chiron. I'm assuming that she had Violin. I don't remember what it was in the video, but because uh, as you can see, even in the text on the bottom there, this effect is activated after all the attacks, attacker's effect has occurred. That's really implying that, okay, Politis is on Violin and now Politis can stun with Violin so she can strip and almost double strip because she can remove the, uh, reduce the buff duration turn with her S2 Astral Guide. But then if you have a Violin or something like that, or even the uh, F10 -E artifact on Politis paired with Chain of Chiron, then she has the benefit of basically everything, right? She has extra damage from the F10 -E artifact, 60% dispel with her Astral Guide. So you got a double dispel check. And then you have the 25%, which is technically an Abyssal Crown, uh, being at 24% if you're plus 30. So like in this scenario, it really works. Like I, I can I can see myself using Jacko. Uh, I'm more curious about how she'll function in, in a world arena setting. Especially now with double pre-bans, it's just... <clears throat> Especially, uh, I think double pre band starts from champ up, right? Champ plus. I I have he I have hesitancy to see that she would take the, the spot of like someone like a Rimuru or a Milim or something like that. But then of course it goes in line with what Smilegate wants to do, which is not to have characters being that overpowered anyway. So is this, you know, now we our question is that is this a faulty design of Jacko? Um, presuming that I'm correct, or is this in line with their holistic view of the game, which is not to make everyone OP. If it's the holistic matter, then I would say from my reading of Jacko and thinking of all the theory crafts, I don't think she's OP, but I think, like I said, I think she'll be usable and maybe more usable than Elfelt right now because people already know how to deal with Elfelt. Jacko right now is just going to be like, once she's released, you know, the RTA player is going to use her. Um, people might put her on Guild War defense, arena defense, you know, they'll use her maybe on offense, but I would say that maybe on a defensive team is slightly better because you're running RNG with her. Um, but regardless, we're going to see her used uh, regardless. So we'll see how effective she will be. Um, that would be the, definitely something to, to note, but I do definitely think that um, even, even as I'm describing my thoughts through these slides, I still think that in tier level, I feel that she's like a function, more like an Elfelt. 
So in terms of uh, like their usefulness will be more like an elf elf. So some people love elf elf. Um, I myself have been clapped by elf elf, and elf elf is a tricky pocket pick. So it's not like Jacko might not be. I, I think Jacko because of her passive buff for the backliner is what's really going to save her in terms of like we're going to see her in many different situations i think that's what my expectation would be so anyways jacko skill 3 is forever a legion a legion driver uh increase the attack of the castle for two turns before attacking the enemy by swallowing them with a jackal lantern uh when the enemy is defeated grants an extra turn so that's that's kind of cool because her s3 is actually decently strong but it penetrates the defense by 50 percent and when the target has a debuff increases the damage dealt now, one thing I'll note is that um, with Hua Yang out, um, because she has 100% defense pen, it's a huge difference in terms of the damage. Um, so I have uh, Mappy's damage calculator uh, open uh, for those who are kind of like, I, I remember the last time I did a video and I did like, I was talking about damage calculation and there was a comment on YouTube saying that, where do I find this? So if you don't know what Mappy's damage calculator is, the spelling is M-A-P-H-E. So it's pronounced Maffy. So Maffy, it's just a search Google, Maffy Damage Calculator, and it's going to be the correct one. Um, and uh, it's a really useful tool, um, especially for me, like talking about like p potential builds and stuff. So anyways, I took the liberty of using my cigarette, um, even though cigarette has an EE, but uh, my cigarette doesn't have an impr imprints. So I'm assuming I'm going to pull maybe, hopefully go for like maybe one to two imprints on Jacko. So I'm just going to use the EE version of my cigarette. So I put some gear on my cigarette and I kind of did a test about 250 speed, 4k attack, 270 crit damage. That was my gear, unfortunately, on immunity set. Uh, and uh, I have some damage mods, all right? So the damage mods uh, against the target with uh, 1500 defense but no aureus no adam and shield uh, and i put that they have a debuff my damage towards them for the s3 is uh, 13,900. it doesn't sound that high to be honest and this is with an attack buff i made sure that attack buff is checked off because her s3 grants her attack buff before doing the attack uh so with a 50 percent defense pen towards a 1500 defense hero without the opponents having adam and shield or adamant passive type of passives uh damage mitigation and uh, damage shearing none of that only 13,900 it's not a lot of damage to be honest and that's 250 speed i mean I, you could jack up the damage to like 300 crit damage quite easily if you're about like 200 and maybe 210 220 speed so looking more like a like a strays and with 300 crit damage you're looking at 15,000 damage so there is a there is a difficulty in my opinion to get that kill on her turn unless you already soften them up with someone in between um that's my opinion uh but uh getting the extra turn if you do kill them uh and if this is with uh, oh also this is with them being debuffed by the way so without being debuffed it, it's a, a significantly lower damage uh let me let me just crank this back to you two Let's say 270 crit damage at 250 speed, and if they don't have, if they don't have debuffs, you're doing 10,000 damage. I don't know if something's broken on the calculator, because it does sound very, very low. But let me just read out what the actual mod is. So the multiplier is a 50% defense pen. The attack rate is at 0.95. So for an S3, that's extremely low, but that is to compensate the defense pen and also to compensate the mod in terms of the debuff. So you're doing 30% more damage if they are debuffed, and that's regardless of what type of debuff it is. If you get a defense break or a target debuff, of course you're gonna do more damage, but it's not that high. So the power is at one, attack rate is 0.95, and 30% uh, more damage on the if they're debuffed. So, you know, again, I'm, I'm not quite sure, but you know, like I said, I'm pulling for her because she's limited, she looks really good. And, you know, if she doesn't turn out to be good by the next time GG ever comes back, I don't have to pull for her again, right? So this time, I, I, I don't I don't want to pull for Elfo, I don't want to pull for Dizzy, I don't want to pull for Biken. It's good time to save. But Jacko on her release, I would still suggest people pull. I know it seems like I keep saying more bad stuff than good stuff, but I see herself as a really straightforward DPS um, with, you know, not its astounding numbers and a passive that could be tricky to use. 
Um, the S1 throws Servant, attacks the enemy with a Servant, a 30% chance to stun. With the plus 3 there, as you can see, you're probably going to get, uh, you're going to get 40% chance to stun. The damage, raw damage is 30% more. Uh, and uh, I would say that her S1 into the extra attack is probably just as impressive, if not more, than the S3 itself. So that's my opinion. Um, but 40% uh, chance to stun after attacking a caster's turn, if the target has a debuff, activates dust attack as an extra attack. So it does the attack, it attacks the enemy by throwing them into the air and granting stealth to the caster for one turn. So this is a very, very nice skill. This is a very, very nice skill to have. But again, they have to have a debuff. They have to have a debuff for her to actually proc the dust attack and then grant the stealth. So like, I feel like the mechanics are are cool. Um, it's just that there's, you're, you're arguably in this meta, you're arguably landing a debuff. You you argue, arguably you are landing a debuff. Almost every single character right now that is meta or a counter to a meta pick has some sort of debuff. So if you have her used, you're most likely gonna get that debuff. Uh, and then the fact that she can debuff herself, but you just have to make sure that you deal with the um, the strip. Right? Um, you, like you have to you have to dispel their immunity. Uh, the S1 mods are like extremely low. If this is correct, the attack rate on the S1 is at 0.75. Generally, when we're looking at someone's S1, we're looking at a one times attack rate and a one times POW. Someone like Milam and Rimuru have like a 1.1, 1.2. Those ones are like exceeding the bar. Those were already, when they came out, I already said their damage mods are actually pretty insane. It's like next level power creep. This is like reduced. And they put all the mods really into the S S1 extra attack, but even the S1 extra attack is not that much. It's at attack rate at 1.1 and a power of one. So it's not, it's not incredibly high. It's actually ridiculously low for an S1 attack. So, um, so I'll, I'll say the damage right now. So again, the same build, 4K attack, 270 crit damage with the attack buff, and uh, they have debuffs. I, I made sure that's checked off and uh, 1500 defense on the opponent the s1 does 4.9k so 4925 to be exact and then the extra de uh, extra attack does 7224 so if you combine those together you're looking at about 12,000 damage whereas the same stats would generate you an s3 of 13,900 damage so you're looking at almost similar damage if you do have a pen set of course um all of that goes up um if you have a pen set instead of an immunity set or maybe you're going with a slower build but you can go with like a pen set crit set immunity set or something like that um you can do with the same stats with a pen set you can do 15,500 damage for the s3 5,600 damage for the s1 and the extra attack does 8,200 damage so again you're looking at of course much higher numbers but it's like is that is that even enough right like it that would i think that would make quite a big big difference but is that what you would need um, so it does depend on how you run her. The faster she is, I would say, the less you would have to have the immunity. But of course you're going to miss out on some damage. Um, if you're going to use it as a damage dealer. Maybe you're using her as that Chain of Chiron buffer, right? So, uh, well something to note about that as well is that it is two turns. Granted for two turns and there is no saying here that it ever comes back. So, like even how she's used is going to be in a more aggressive comp because you're gonna run out. And then the the uh, the CR boost for the full team activates once every three turns. Um, so the stun doesn't obviously have to come from Chain of Chiron, it could come from any source. It could come from an Abyssal Crown, it could come from like Champion's Trophy, it could come from any source and it would work, but it's only once every three turns. So it's like, you kinda wanna uh, almost finish your fight in one to two turns with Jacko involved. Um, I just don't believe that uh, even if you don't include the passive, her S1 and the S3 itself dictates that she's going to be one of those characters that would just last very long in a in a bruiser fight. Um, outside of you keep granting her stealth and they've locked themselves to a single target attack, that's the only way I can see her like you know surviving long enough. Um, so I'm not quite sure how this will work. Maybe maybe we're gonna see the Sigurd Scythe counter variation although counter doesn't really do much maybe lifesteal sigurd scythe lifesteal variation and you know run her slow bulky and with a bit of damage and 
have her survive and then just have the chain of Chiron be the the thing that kind of I don't know um allows your draft or your team to be more aggressive and she herself kind of sit back I don't know I'm not quite sure about this uh Jacko's uh artifact as well so increases the effectiveness of all allies by 10%. If the target has a debuff when the caster attacks with a single attack, increases the damage up to 24% damage. Uh, so this is higher than uh, anything we have in game in terms of like a portrait, but it is lower than Iron Fan. So Iron Fan um, hitting uh, on uh, Ice Hero will, will grant you 30% more damage. Uh, so the condition here is obviously if they have a debuff, but of course it's not like portrait. Uh, it does not require them to be above 50% HP. So when I see this, I'm just like, I don't know if this is the exact artifact I would go for here. Um, although I didn't know what artifact was on the Jacko when I was theorycrafting, by the way. So if you wanted more damage, of course, I think if you slap on a portrait, you do about 15,000 damage. Let me, let me put this on. 16,000 damage, actually, with a portrait. So if you're going to treat her as a nuker, you could do that, but she's a warrior and it's the warrior meta right now. So there's a ton of artifacts that you could put, potentially run her on. You could run her on a zero comet if you needed her turn quicker, uh, lower the requirements of the crit crit rate. Uh, you could run her on Draco Plate if you need, if you run her on Sigurd Scythe, if you need that sustain, I suppose. Um, there's just a lot of stuff that you could run on a warrior now. I don't think that this is going to be her best in slot. It just, it, it almost says... Oh, almost like a wyvern or a, a hunt type of uh, artifact. Um, so I would say in terms of the artifact, it's definitely not like a miscon file, especially when miscon file was released. It's definitely not like, a, I don't get that sense of like, I must have this artifact. But I mean, I wouldn't, if I don't get any artifacts while I'm pulling for Jacko, then I will still get it in the powder shop um just to get it early uh but regardless it is useful for again pve it's very useful for pve i just am more questionable on this if this is a pvp artifact i don't know if that was designed i don't believe that is the case so that is my thoughts on jacko um um, again, I don't think anything in her kit would tell me that she's broken. The interplay of the Chain of Chiron with like, you know, a handful of heroes is going to be very interesting to see. That's going to be what will interest me the most. In terms of damage, although you can grant an extra turn and potentially, you know, cycle and one shot something with a, you know, S3 and an S1 into an S1 extra attack and potentially get a stun on the S1. Uh, outside of that, she's she's uh, she speaks more like an elf elf to me. Um, where elf elf is very very useful. Put one to sleep. You can defense break full team. You can attack buff full team. You can CR boost and stuff like that. So like like I feel like elf felt and her have that like they're they're usable. Uh, my question would be like, is it going to be usable right off the bat? So once I get her, I think I'm going to. Uh, you know, level her, uh, you know, try to level her friendship and stuff like that. I'm not 100% sure I'm going to commit to the Bola at the moment and even potentially build her until there's more testing done. But that's my initial thoughts for Jacko. I'm going to end this with the video recording. If you guys have Discord, check out the Discord server. Follow me on Twitter and subscribe to YouTube if you haven't. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. If you guys are interested in seeing more content from me, please check out my new YouTube channel, Casual Face Rule. This channel will be mainly focused on my stream VODs when I play other games. I've been currently playing a lot of Elden Ring and I love it. You guys, you guys would know I'm really bad at platforming! Oh, I'm so clutch. Hurt it! Oh, shoot! So you say? <laughs> so if you want to support me there, please consider subscribing. Thanks.